stick just changed around here, buddy. You're looking at it. You are now listening to the Outsiders Podcast, the most exciting and hard-hitting show on the net. And now, bringing it hard as always on the Kansas City Chiefs and the NFL, here are your hosts, Clint Schweitzer and Noah Groniger. The autumn wind is a pirate, blustering in from sea, with a rollicking song he sweeps along, swaggering voicelessly. His face is weather beaten, he wears a hooded sash, with a silver hat about his head, and a bristling black mustache. He growls as he storms the country, a villain big and bold, and the trees all shake and quiver and quake as he robs them of their gold. The autumn wind is a raider, pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. Well, thank you, John Facenda. Thank you, NFL Films. Thank you, Kansas City Chiefs, for yet another laughable, unexcusable, unbelievable performance. And the Oakland Raiders came in and absolutely physically manhandled and dominated us, likes of which I may not have ever seen in my life. Yeah, we've been dominated by their defensive line before, but nothing, nothing even close to how it was on Sunday. Oh, it was like the equivalent of Psycho Sid Vicious in wrestling, dominating and dismantling some jobber in the ring guy, and if you know your old wrestling lingo, just absolutely throwing them around like a rag doll, and that's what the Oakland Raiders did to the Kansas City Chiefs on Sunday. Huge props to Richard Seymour, Tommy Kelly, Matt Shaughnessy, and Lamar Houston. They threw our offensive linemen to the ground and made plays. It was ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, and we talked to, to Bill Moss about this uh, in our Raiders preview last week, and he said basically that this has been happening for the, the past few years, and it has. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs are not a physical football team. Their offensive line is not good. Uh, Ryan Lilja just really struggling at center. This whole thing was a nightmare. This is... To the point of unabashed insanity that we're witnessing out there at Arrowhead right now. It is beyond reproach. It is beyond defense. There is no possible way I will not listen to a single defense of this football team right now. I won't listen to it. Oh, I won't either. I mean, I've heard Trent Green on the radio talk about how the offensive linemen in the past, Will Shields, Willie Rofe, now, yes, they were extremely talented, great Hall of Fame players, but they wouldn't have let that happen on Sunday. They would have looked each other in the eye and said, we are going to get this fixed. They would have been screaming, yelling. I didn't see anything like that. They're just, well, I'm going to get thrown to the ground, and that's it. And you saw Richard Seymour come in, and absolutely, he killed Castle, threw him to the ground. Maybe it should have been a penalty. Maybe it shouldn't. Uh, Chief, Chiefs linemen start yelling at Seymour, pushing him around. Stop it. Don't hurt him anymore, you, you meanie. And Richard <laughs> Seymour sits there, and he looks, and he laughs and walks away. To me, that is a microcosm of this Chiefs season definitely of that game because the Raiders wanted it more. They're hungrier. They have a better quarterback. They have at least a new coach in, in, in play. They have management that wants to win. They might not be a very good team. I, don't, I still don't think they're going to be a winning team, but they threw us around. The Chiefs officially became the worst team in the NFL yesterday. That's unbelievable. Oh, it's by unbelievable. far. I mean, you say maybe it's the Browns. Nope, Browns beat the Chargers. You say maybe it's the Panthers. Well, they gave the Bears a really, really good game. They should have won that game. I mean, if we played the Bears, it'd be 45 to nothing. We would get crushed. Lance Briggs, Brian Erlocker, good night. Uh, oh, man, and, of course, and then you have the Jaguars who are sitting with the same record as well, but they were competitive against uh, you know at Green Bay. The Chiefs are the worst team in football right now. That could change. We may not wind up with the worst record in football, but this is beyond reproach. I'm not going to go to any Facebook page and listen to anybody say anything positive about this team. I'm sorry. This is it. This is done. If any of this goes any further, there, it is impossible to me to think that Romeo, Pioli, any of these people, Dayball, this entire staff, Castle, any of the, most of these players can survive this. It is just the worst thing I've ever seen. The Chiefs have still not led for a moment of football in the 2012 season. We are seven games into it. Last time that happened, 1940, when Lamar Hunt was eight years old. This is just the worst thing. I, I know the, you know, five, five, six years ago, the Lions went 0-16. I'm telling you what, 
This is as bad as that, is it not? Oh, it is. I mean, I think uh, I heard the Lions had 29 turnovers that season. We've already had, what, 22, 23? Yeah. Yeah. It, I've never seen anything like it as a football fan. I've been watching this team, you know, since I was five, six years old. I'm 28 years old. And I'm going to tell you something about the Kansas City Chiefs. There may be not a thing on this earth that means more to me than the Chiefs. That's why Noah and I are sitting here. My, I, I'm 28 years old. I've been a fan since I was a kid. That's what I grew up with. I grew up going to Arrowhead, and every single day that's the greatest day of my life has either taken place in Kansas City at Arrowhead Stadium or Mizzou at Faroe Field, every single one of them. I don't have a family. I don't have. I, I, I have turned down jobs in the past, Noah, and I know you're, you're with me on this. Yeah, because I recently turned one down. Because I was afraid of work, having to work on weekends and missing a Chiefs game. I haven't missed a snap of Chiefs football since the 92 season, okay? I do this. We are sitting here right now because we want to win a Super Bowl. We are as big of fans as you will find anywhere. We don't have families to go home to and to numb these losses with. We don't have wives and children to make this okay. Our lives are about Sunday and the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've had fights with girlfriends in the past. I mean, I know you have. I have about making football this important, and they want to go out to parks and picnics on Sundays during the Chiefs game or out to antique shops, and no, it's not going to happen. I am here on Sunday to watch the Kansas City Chiefs play and hopefully win. We are – you talk about the girlfriend thing. I mean, I, I, I've had girlfriends certainly that the relationship hasn't worked specifically for the reason of this this passion in my life. I, I don't – You're too into sports. It's true. You know what? And maybe it's a fault. Maybe it's a, it's some, a detriment. But it's something that is important to me. A lot of you, you know, you, you watch a Chiefs game. You go out after, after the game. You take the kids outside. You play. You take the wife. You guys go to Home Depot and buy some drapes. That's not <laughs> Noah and I's life. We do this because it is all about football 100% of the time. That's why we don't understand when we're on Facebook and we see people say, oh, we're just having fun at Arrowhead. Really? Because this thing is about winning a championship. And this team is the worst team I have seen since the 0-16 Lions. And it may change. This team may string together three or four wins, and it may happen. But right now, this is the worst thing I've ever seen, and nobody should be safe. Oh, God, no. I mean, Clint and I, we are educated, smart football fans, and that's why we're upset. We know things going on as they are will not get us a win, will not get us to the playoffs, will not get us to the Super Bowl. Our ultimate goal in life is to have the Kansas City Chiefs win that Super Bowl, and we're not going to get that right now. We have to have things change. We have to have Clark Hunt take control of this thing and show us that he is committed 110% to putting a winning contender on the field. No. Yeah, and that's where it's going to start. Cause, and I think Clark is a smart guy. He's a businessman. I think at this point, the losing has become so egregious, so beyond reproach, that I think that's, that heads are going to start rolling. And it may happen soon. We have a quick week. We, we're going to turn around, and we're going to talk about this Chargers game coming up here in a little bit. Uh, and I don't think you, any of you are probably even looking forward to this game right now or wanting analysis. And right now, Chiefs fans have become so numb to this, and I understand that to a certain degree. Uh, you go to Royals games You ha you in this town, you see nothing but losing. You go to Chiefs game in this town, the Chiefs haven't even won but a couple games at Arrowhead in the last three or four years. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. The Chargers have won more games at Arrowhead since we have. That's correct. In the last five years, yes. Yeah. I, that, and it's, I, I think it's – the Chiefs have started at least one in six. So many times in the last five years, I, I, I think all but 10 I think yeah. all but 2010. The Chief, and, and this is – I tell you what. We want nothing more than to see this turn around. You all do. But you guys, you've got to step it up. you got to step it up. You cannot shrug this stuff off and say, go Chiefs, get the touchdown, and say, <laughs> I support this team no matter what. Well, you know what? I support this team no matter what. Just because we're knowledgeable and realistic doesn't mean that we're not watching every game or we're not at Arrowhead every Sunday because we are. Oh, yeah. What I makes mean you a better fan? You're not. No, I mean, I'm watching every single game, every single snap. I'm on Facebook and Twitter uh, doing game play-by-play uh, -play for it. I mean, I understand what's going on. I understand our defensive line is not getting a push. Their defensive line is just crushing people, throwing them out of the way. We needed quick, short passes in that game, and Dayball kept putting Brady Quinn in bad spots, having him do five, seven-step drops, uh, trying to get the ball deep downfield, and it just wasn't going to work. We had to do some screens, some draws, some quick slants, some drags to get the Raiders 
to stop their pass rush, to get them to slow down a little bit. Then we could take things down the field. Brian Dayball wasn't aware of that, and that was killing us. Well, that's a whole other issue, and we're talking about a team with Jamal Charles had five carries for four yards. We couldn't run the ball because the Raiders' off defensive line is too strong. We couldn't throw the ball because, like you said, we're, we're dealing with five- and seven-step drops against a pass rush that is coming in like a freight train and just murdering every player. It, just, it, it, it looks like a scene out of 300 or something, just nine million you know Spartans being engulfed by yeah. an entire army you know it just it's un you guys if you didn't see it out there watch the tape again it was murderous it was criminal behavior out there and <laughs> that, that's what the Chiefs have come to the laughing stock the worst team in the NFL and you know of course Brady Quinn gets hurt in the middle of all this uh, egregious pass rush and and Matt Castle comes back out now Romeo Cornell has stated that you know Quinn will be the quarterback going forward does it even matter at this point? I mean, Brady Quinn is inaccurate. He had, brings nothing to the table either. But, I mean, is the quarterback position even something to worry about right now at 1-6? One, at one well, if you don't block anybody, I mean, no quarterback you put out there is going to be successful. People say, well, Matt Castle came in. He moved the ball a little bit. Well, that's because Dayball finally realized that and he got some quick passes, some quick plays for Matt, and that's why he was able to move the ball more effectively than Brady. Um, I think if Brady would have stayed healthy, he would have had the same opportunity. But while Brady was in there, he had to do the – five seven step drops and that was not going to work when you have one second to throw the ball yeah and of course the final score guys 26 to 16 was not in any way indicative of how much of a blowout this game was guys felt like 45 nothing it just felt like we were just peewee football team versus a college football team it was ridiculous you i, I watched a lot of games this week i watched, I watched a lot of college ball i went to the mizzou kentucky game i saw sheldon richardson rip a ball out of a defender's hand and run 80 yards with it the other way. I saw Tay Al from Notre Dame find a ball that's tipped in the air when a game depends on it, find it, intercept it, make the play. You see nothing like that from this Chiefs team. If a ball gets deflected in the air and there's eight people around, nobody's going to find it and get to it. The Chiefs have not out physical an opponent since the 90s when Marty Schottenheimer was there. This is a soft, horrible football team. I don't want to hear any more about how much talent's on it. This is a disaster. There's not one player you can count on to make that play. Like you said, a lot of games go on. You watched a lot of football this week. You see the same thing as I did, people making plays on anywhere except Kansas City. Oh, everywhere except Kansas City. I mean, Tim Jennings for the Bears. I mean, they're down to the Panthers. He picks off two passes, takes one to the house. I mean, you just – if this continues, we have got to get this thing changed. We have got to get Romeo out of here. The longer this continues – the harder it's going to be to dig ourselves out of this because the players are just have no heart, no passion. They're not playing at all. I think Jack Harry is right. This, this team has quit. This team has completely quit on this organization, on this coach. They are not playing hard at all. They're not running the right routes. They're not doing anything correctly. It is a complete mess the only, of a football team. The only facet of this of the Chiefs that is somewhat, you know, is somewhat okay is is a kicking game. Suckup has been, have really quietly had a good season. He's not missing field goals. If not for that, this would be a disaster in every facet. So I'm sitting here watching, okay, the Cowboys-Giants game after ours was a complete blowout. I turn over there, and the New York Giants had a 24-0 lead. The Cowboys come back. They take the lead. The Kansas City Chiefs, down in that spot, it was actually 23-0, I believe, Giant. Yeah. If the Kansas City Chiefs were in a game down 23 to nothing, it's over. It yeah. is done. They're not going to take the lead. They might score some mop-up touchdowns here and there, or you, a touchdown. You watch the Cowboys at home with their season on the line fight back to take a lead down 23 nothing. They did not win the game. The New York Giants are a very good team, and they're maybe underrated at this point, even though they're the defending Super Bowl champs. You don't see that passion, desire, heart out of one player on this Kansas City Chiefs team. It's sick. Oh, I'm sick I mean, about Charles it. Charles keeps coming out. Uh, he only had five carries. I mean, what's that about? I mean, you fight your way back into the game to get more carries. If you're really die hard, all about this team, know what your abilities are, and know you're the best running back on this team. I mean, it's on the coaches and it's on Jamal. I mean, you fight to get back on that field to get more carries, get more touches. You saw it in Chicago. You saw a team down 19-7. It looked like it was going to be over. The Carolina Panthers brought it, which happens in the NFL. You're going to get locked in a battle. San Diego loses on the road at Cleveland, a bad team we thought. Someone found a way to make a play in Chicago. Nobody finds a way to make a play here in Kansas City. Nobody has done it in years. I think it starts with the head coach. I mean, 
Yes, the general manager brought the head coach in here, so it starts with him. But, I mean, as far as the way this team is playing, it starts with the head coach and his just lackadaisical, happy-go-lucky attitude. Just, I don't know what's going on out there. I mean, we've still got some more games. We'll give it a best shot. Like It's uh, it's unacceptable. Yeah, the- it's, it's a just complete and utter mess. We have the worst head coach, the worst general manager, and right now the worst players because they just are not playing at all. No fire, nothing. So, at this point, you're looking at a – at Romeo being I think he know and I think maybe part of his lackadaisical way that he handles he's been the that media, way all season it is but at this point he's so lackadaisical with the media he he knows he's out so he needs to be out I mean get, well get Maurice Carthon in here as an interim head coach and ride that out until we can get somebody here's the a deal. real coach here's the pro, here's the here's the conundrum here when you're talking about blowing this thing up and it needs to happen and I believe it will happen Romeo Cornell is also our defensive coordinator now it doesn't matter if you got rid of him and had no defensive coordinator, no. It really doesn't going forward. Just but promote Emma Thomas or something. It's perhaps. And I think that there's – but, again, you're going to talk about Scott Pioli firing two head coaches midway through seasons two years in a row. How in the world – Oh, he's gone too. Do Pioli does that? not survive it. He is gone. It's over. End of story. Well, that End happens. And if that happens, that that's going to give you the whole re- second half of the season – to be in contact with somebody. I don't care. I'm not going to speculate right now. I'm not going to throw you out a name because I don't know who Clark wants, who we, who he would want, what kind of general manager he would I, We don't know any of that, so why speculate? Why throw out names like John Gruden and Bill Cowher when we have no idea? <laughs> why? why? We have no you idea. just threw the names out well, there. Well, you, you know, per exemple, <laughs> here's the deal. We don't know. That's, a, that's down the road. That gives you a, 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 an extended period of time to figure this out rally your troops, get a staff in here in time to to draft a quarterback in April. Does that have to be the plan at this point? Yeah, we have to have a quarterback. we got to get a franchise guy. We need leaders on this team. If you're not going to lead, if you're not going to voice your opinion, if you're not going to pick guys up, if you're not going to get in their face, then get the hell off this team. We need to bring somebody in here, a coach that's going to be a hard ass on these guys. I Like Todd Haley was, I mean, he got results. He yeah. had the injuries in his last year, and then they went with Romeo, a nice guy. We see what's that, what that's doing. We need a hard ass to get in these guys' faces and tell them this is unacceptable, and you will not be here if you continue to play like this. Yeah, I think that's the direction. Of course, you know, in the NFL, you always do the opposite of what you did last time. Okay, and with the Chiefs, in two years you had, you know, uh, fire and brimstone Pioli, or excuse me, uh, Haley, and then – Nice guy, Romeo. Teddy Bear, Romeo. So now you're going to go the opposite of Teddy Bear, I think, in this next... I think it depends on what kind of team you have, and the team we have needs a hard ass. I don't care whether he's winning or losing. We just got to find the right hard ass. Well, This team needs one. They cannot have a soft coach. They can't handle it. Well, they cannot handle it. No, and I don't think the, I don't think NFL players uh, in this day and age with how people are now can handle that. I think you need to be kept in line because these guys are so different than the players of the 70s. We talked to George Atkinson last week. I'd be like to, I'd like to hear his thoughts on just how players are these days because they're just so so different. I mean, that's the NFL is different. But let's look forward here because the Chiefs have a quick turnaround. They're going to play on the Thursday night game at San Diego. San Diego Superchargers. I enjoyed that. I did enjoy that song. Uh, the Chiefs are going to get get beaten by San Diego, and it's going to be probably be a bloodbath again. San Diego is a team uh, that's also in disarray though right now. They're three and four. Just lost to the Browns, seven to six. They're not good. They'll beat the Chiefs. They're way better than the Kansas City Chiefs. But uh, you know, we're talking about a quick turnaround. Uh, you know, San Diego is going to have to win this game to keep, and they're still in it. San Diego and the Raiders are still in this thing. Okay, yeah, they're a game behind Denver. So, so San Diego is going to need to win. Their, their backs are against the wall a little bit. So uh, we can't cover Gates. We saw that. So. Yeah, Barry won't be able to cover Gates. You know. Rivers, who's been struggling, I think they'll get it together and beat us rather easily. Quick turnaround, got to go out to San Diego. I it, think we lose by at least fourteen, at least fourteen. So you're, you're talking about that, and then you got to go to Pittsburgh next Monday night on the road. You're talking about most likely ninety nine percent and one and eight start here. Yeah, I can't wait to see Todd Haley laughing it up on the sideline as he watches this team in total disarray, thinking, "Wow, you fired me for this." You should have kept me and fired Scott Pioli. That's what I said when this thing was going down last year. I thought they should have fired Scott Pioli and kept Todd Haley. If those two can't get along, then get rid of the one that sucks, and I thought that was Scott Pioli. And it is. You know, but, you know, San Diego, as we look at this division, uh, the Broncos with another impressive win over the New Orleans Saints. They're obviously the best team in this division. They're obviously going They're obviously going to win it, I think, at this point. I said it all year, folks, and I'll say it again. Oh, you're right. Cream you're of the crop, they're winning. Absolutely right, but – at this point, 
I still think San Diego has a chance, and I think that the, that chance for them starts this Thursday night with a, a prime time game against Kansas City. Perfect time to get healthy and get things the ship righted for them. Yeah. Uh, they have a shot at a wild card. They have no shot at winning this division unless Peyton Manning gets injured, something crazy or whatever. But I see them having a 0% chance at winning this division and uh, maybe a 7% chance at a wild card because they are just bad. Other than playing us this week, uh, I don't see how they beat many more teams. Uh, yeah, they, they may not. It's going to be interesting because I think the Raiders are a team going in the right direction. Uh, maybe San Diego and Kansas City downtrending right now. but Having to completely overhaul and start over with the Chargers and Chiefs after this year, it looks like. Yeah, I think so. And San Diego's maybe needed this shot in the arm for many years now with uh, North Turner and that whole thing. But, guys, we're going to see coming up here. Uh, Kansas City, obviously, I, obviously I don't think a lot of you are looking forward to this and saying, wow, big game on Thursday. Let's go. Right? Let's get together and get a Chiefs win. I think right now everyone's so deflated that people are going to be watching this probably – with disgust, especially considering we just played so horribly a few days ago. We're going to see. Guys, we want to thank you so much for joining us. Make One more thing I have right now is that the trade deadline was moved to Thursday. Dwayne Bowe not going to be going, I guess. Could so. be. Dwayne Bowe, Glenn Dorsey, they're on the trading block, so that'll be interesting to keep an eye on. Guys, we appreciate all of you listening to us today. And make sure you're hitting us up on all of our social network outlets. Uh, there's a lot of ways to catch The Outsiders Podcast. All of our shows are, are uh, archived on the website, theoutsiderspodcast.weebly.com. Catch us on Facebook, facebook.com slash theoutsiderspodcast. Of course, on Twitter, Chiefs Outsiders. Uh, guys, we always appreciate your input. Keep coming to all the sites, liking. Uh, subscribing, sharing, viewing. We're on iTunes now. Don't miss out. Download yes. our stuff. iTunes, man. Go to subscribe for free. Download that. Listen to it at work or when you get a free minute. Guys, we appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you guys post-game Chiefs and Chargers this Thursday. <laughs>